Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Aquarium Online Academy. I'm James. I work here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm our resident whale and dolphin expert. So we're going to talk about mammals. This is a great time for you to participate. You get to text in your questions. What do you want to know about marine mammals? What do you want to learn? What have you always wondered about them? We do have a lot of information we can share, but we want to know what you would like to learn. So go ahead and text us at the number right here. My friend Tali is going to put up all the magic stuff behind me here on the green screen. But text us at 562-286-1838. And our alley over there is going to be on question control, putting the questions in the studio so that we can help answer them for you. Now, if you ask a ton of questions, we may not be able to get to all of them on the air, but we will try to answer all of them as soon as we can. You can also ask us questions live at lbaop.org, that email down there. If you're not watching, live Monday morning at 10 o'clock. So let's get started. Well, what is a marine mammal? Is probably a good question to start with, shall we? What, what would you say is a marine mammal? Can you think of some examples? Hmm. Let's look at some examples that we have on our system here. Maybe let's start with mm, a whale or dolphin that Talia can show us. Whales and dolphins are commonly thought of as marine mammals. They're definitely marine animals, which means ocean. So when they're in the ocean, they're a marine animal, or if they at least visit part of the ocean during part of their life. Because some animals go in and out. They go from rivers and estuaries to the ocean and back. Now this marine mammal the humpback whale, it's going to be a lot different than other marine mammals that we look at today. So let's make some observations, use our eyes and our brains to notice some things that we can see here. What did you notice about the humpback whale? One of the often favorites of people, it's actually one of the most recognizable whales, and part of it is because of these long pectoral fins. They're smaller dorsal fin right here. And that face, they have bumps on their face. The bumps are actually where they have little hair follicles. So mammals have hair. Even whales like this have hair somewhere on their body at some point in their life. Now the cool thing is, you now like you ever get goosebumps, you see the bumps come up on your arm? That's where your hair follicles are. That's where one or a bunch of hairs can come out and grow out of your skin. Well, the bumps on their face are called tubercles, and that's where a little hair, actually it's not that little on a whale, a hair would grow on the humpback. Here's a much better picture of the tubercles right here. Not all whales and dolphins have these. Humpback whales do. Now we're getting some questions about another kind of marine mammal that we'll get into in just a sec. So Adam, we'll get to your question shortly. So we've already seen that this animal has hair. Much easier to see on the next animal that they have hair. The other kind of hair that a whale can have is this stuff in their mouth. This is baleen. Okay. Now baleen is partly how they feed. Other whales have teeth instead of baleen. But they all have a little bit of hair around their nose, which is their blowhole, right, right there, when they're born. So mammals have hair. <gasps> we breathe air because we're mammals. Mammals also nurse their young. The moms produce milk and nurse the babies. The babies have to consume milk. They're not eating other things besides milk initially. Now, as they grow up, their diet changes. But initially, they're consuming the milk. They're also warm-blooded. This animal right here has to maintain the same body temperature no matter where it is in the ocean, just like we do. If it's cold today, I would wear a jacket, kind of like I wore my vest today. If it's super duper hot, I would wear less thick clothing because I don't want my body temperature to change. That's warm blooded. Cold blooded animals like fish are the temperature of the water they're in. You know, there's a temperature they can survive in, they can't just go wherever they want. There's a temperature that's safe for them. So that's us. So mammals have hair. We breathe air. We drink milk as babies or produce milk as moms. And we're warm blooded. Now, here's a cool question on our list. Santos is asking, why is a whale a mammal? Well, we just kind of went over that, but let's make a quick review because even if it doesn't look like a dog, a cat, a person, a monkey, an elephant, it still counts as a mammal if 
they breathe air. Remember the spout coming off the whale? Right here. That is the air that they're blowing out. Now, that plume is water, but it's water that was sitting on their nose. It's not water from inside their lungs. Remember, we don't want water inside our lungs. That's bad for your health. So that's that cloud that comes off when they blow the air out of their lungs. Breathing air. They're warm-blooded, which they have a fat layer inside their body to help keep them warm. They have hair. Talked about the hair around their nose. And they produce milk or drink milk from mom. So that's why they count as mammals. So when you see a marine mammal, you got to think of those few things. that wa Why are we the same as that animal? Now, Jacob was asking, what do humpbacks eat? Let's go back to the big mouth picture real quick. Because if you look real close, you can actually see the food in the water. See that kind of black little dot thing right there? That's actually little tiny fish that this humpback was eating. With baleen, they can eat small fish or even medium fish and krill. Krill's about the size of your pinky. So everybody hold up your pinky like when you do a pinky swear. That's about the size of krill, okay? Krill are not very big, but sometimes the fish some whales eat is big. Now the blue whale, the other picture we're looking at, blue whales only eat krill, or at least some of the blue whales do. There's a few blue whales that might eat more than krill, but there's a couple, couple groups of blue whales that only eat krill. Two kinds of krill, in fact. Two species of krill. That's their whole diet. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about what things eat, because that's a pretty common question we get. But let's take a look at the next mammal that Adam was asking about, and that's the sea otter. Now, sea otters are pretty popular. There's a cute factor for sea otters. But they're also kind of um, mischievous, and they break stuff. That's just what they do. Their natural inclination or natural just behavior is to break open their food. So let's take a look. Oh, those teeth right there. They have those sharp, pointy canine teeth just like we do, just like a dog or a cat does. The canine teeth in a lot of mammals tells you that they are a carnivore, or they could be an omnivore. It depends on the rest of their teeth or what they, their diet can actually take. But if they have those big pointy teeth in the front of their mouth like that, they're eating meat or other animals. They have to tear off a bite. Now, if you're a grass or plant only eating animal, they don't really have the big pointy teeth like that. They might have more teeth like the front of our mouth, to take a small tear of bites off of the plant material. But their sharp pointy ones are for eating other animals. Let's take a look at a, not an otter jaw, because I didn't grab that rep, but we'll take a look at this one, because this one has nice long teeth. See those canine teeth? That tells you they're eating other animals. They are at least a carnivore, if not an omnivore. Now, Adam's question about the fur, you see that lovely sea otter, grooming itself <laughs> looks like me in the morning <laughs> that fur that they're grooming is the thickest fur by number of hairs of any animal so not the individual hairs thickness like our hair can be pretty thick each individual hair they have a lot of hair so if you made like a little scope hand think about the size of a quarter that space right there on their body can hold up to a million hairs. That's like seven to 10 of your scalp ha hairs, like seven to 10 of you and your friends all shaved your heads and scrunched it down to this much. That's how thick or dense the fur of a sea otter is. So Adam, if you want to know how many, it's going to take a long time to count because if you counted one number per day or one number per second, I mean, to count to a million would take you 11 and a half days. So if you're going to count all the hairs, it's going to take a long time. But remember, they can have up to a million, one square inch of space. But not all mammals have that much fur or that dense of fur. Even your dog or cat won't have fur as thick as a sea otter. In fact, that space with up to one million hairs might be all the hair on a German shepherd or a big dog. Just think of a big dog. Dog about German shepherd size. Hmm. You know, it's an estimate. It's not exact. But that's pretty close to what it would be. Now... Our bodies don't have anywhere near that much. Remember, it's like 7 to 10 of your heads to equal that much on an otter. So depending on the environment, 
the fur changes and has a different purpose. Now their fur is also like a wet suit, actually more like a dry suit because their skin doesn't get wet. It creates an insulation layer like a jacket and the, the air that gets trapped in their fur, like the air inside my jacket, helps keep their bodies warm. They also naturally produce a lot of body heat because of the diet. Remember those teeth we were talking about? They'll eat 20 to 30% of their body weight per day. That is a lot of food. Now, because of that, they can't necessarily go underwater for very long to get their food. Their lung capacity and ability to hold their breath is just not very long. They are grabbing things off the seafloor, so they only have to go down for a few minutes at a time maybe three to five minutes per dive to get to their food. Now they all eat things like crab, abalone, which are big snails. Well, snailish animals, they're related to snails. They eat sea stars. Sometimes they have actually been seen catching octopus. But they do have a, a, an, a, an arrangement of things they might eat. But one of the favorite things of most sea otters is sea urchins. So just because it's kind of dangerous like a, a, a crab or an urchin, which is very pokey, hard to grab, they can still get them off the seafloor, pull them up to the surface, and feed from the surface like this. They actually use their chest and their belly as a table. Okay, so they don't dive for very long to capture their food, which is kind of an interesting reverse segue for Miss Amador's class's question. They asked how long can whales and dolphins stay underwater? So a sea urchin only needs a few minutes to get one of these or a bunch of these. They get a few and they go back up to the surface. But they're, you know, this big, and they do a lot of little dives a day. But if you're a whale or dolphin, you're gonna need to dive for a longer period of time because you have to go much farther down in some cases to capture your food. That humpback we were looking at, or even this blue whale, they're doing this activity where they lunge through the water with their mouth open, and they gather large bodies of water into their mouth. And then they squirt the water out through their lips, with their mouth just open and closed enough so they can squirt the water out. But if you notice, they can expand the bottom of their mouth and throat to hold this big body of water to gather all the little fish and krill that they can and they spit the water out. Well, if you're a whale with teeth, like a dolphin, you don't have to dive as deep sometimes to capture your food. So this is a cousin to this one. This is a bottlenose dolphin. This is from something called a false killer whale or pseudo orca. Every tooth looks like a canine tooth because all they do is grab and swallow. They're not really going to chew or tear their food a lot. They can, but most of what these teeth are supposed to do is just grab the food and help them swallow it. So teeth really have an important function in how you eat. And because of that, dolphins might die for maybe five to eight minutes, not very long. Eight minutes might be a long dive for some dolphins. Some dolphins might only get to about 10 minutes. But the longest diving whales, we consider whales like a generic category, are the, uh, what are called, beaked whales. So beaked whales, like Baird's beaked whale or Cuvier's beaked whale, they're also cousins to this animal, but they dive thousands of feet down to capture their prey, which are usually deep ocean uh, squid and other little animals swimming around in there. So they need that time to get down there to get, get their food. So if they're going to go two to 5,000 feet down in the water, they need some time, which is why the Cuvier's beaked whale has been shown to dive the deepest and the longest of all the whales, except for the sperm whale. There's kind of a competition who gets, to, I don't know if they're actually competing, but it's like, who can do most? The sperm whale has been clocked at, uh, I think the deepest at about 6,000 feet, but I think the Cuvier's beaked whale has been diving almost as deep or as deep, but then the sperm whale can dive longer, sometimes up to two hours. We keep learning more, and so the, the, who's the winner is going to keep changing, so just they both dive a lot. Okay, now <laughs> Vita is asking, what's the biggest whale? Not that one. We want to go back to the blue whale picture. Well, you can't really see much of that blue whale, but that's okay. We'll look at the blue whale. The blue whale, when you're out in the water watching blue whales, that's about as much as you get to see at any one moment, which is maybe a third of their body. They're the biggest of all animals that we 
have ever found on this planet. Ever. They are heavier than any dinosaur has been. Now, there's only a couple species of dinosaur that are as long or longer because of our long necks, okay, but nowhere near as heavy. The heaviest blue whale was estimated at 400,000 pounds. We're thinking they average about 300,000 pounds. We can't really pick them up and go, mm, yep, that's 300,000. We just don't have a scale for that. But based off of our math of how we know their bodies are made up and how big they are, we can estimate their weight. So the average blue whale is probably weighing about 300,000 pounds. That's a big animal. So Vita, that's the biggest whale. Not so blue when they're out of water, but underwater, they definitely look a lot more blue. All right, let's get to some of our other questions we've got going on. All right, Nyla is asking, are whales smooth? Well, if you look at this, Nyla, does it look like they're really hairy on their body? Nope, so we don't have to worry about hair like a sea otter. That Oscar loves sea otters, so don't have to worry about trying... Uh, Actually, it'd be kind of funny to see if a whale would try to brush their hair. They don't have it, so this, they don't need to do that. So no hair to touch. Their skin is very smooth, though, just like our skin can be very smooth without hair. So they, they are smooth. They're not really slimy, though. They don't have a mucus coat over their skin like a stingray does. Okay, So smooth, but not slimy. All right, I'm reading some of our questions. Oscar's asking, how long can otters stay underwater? We got that, Oscar. Thanks for asking that. We want to make sure we, we kind of know the maximums that things are doing. Otters typically will dive a minute, maybe three to five at most. Some whales are diving many minutes. A blue whale might do 10 to 20 minutes on average. Now, in terms of speed, Rosalind's asking who is faster, the sea otter or the whale? Well, remember, sea otters don't dive for very long. They don't have to chase their food. So their bodies are not designed for speed, but more so for a shallow kelp forest habitat that all they have to do is go down for a minute or two, grab some food, come up, and eat it. It's a big cycle. That's all they do is just dive and eat, dive and eat, dive and eat, and then sleep some too, and then dive and eat, and dive and eat, and then sleep some too. Remember, they're eating 20 to 30% of their body weight. So... Let's say you're a 100-pound person. You'd have to eat around hmm, 25 to 30 pounds of food per day. Humans can't eat that much. We're doing maybe 3% of our body weight per day. But these animals, they forage or search for food a lot. They groom a lot. And then they sleep some too. Seems like a pretty nice life, honestly. So Roslyn, the faster one, is not going to be the sea otter. It's going to be... The whales, even some of the slowest whales, are going to be able to just generically walk. Like we walk at a regular pace, we're at like two to four miles per hour. That might be what they do. But whales are averaging around, on a slow pace, five to eight miles an hour. And the fastest whales are sprinting over 30 miles an hour, like a dolphin. So, Roslyn, whales are the faster ones. Now, another question about skin was do they have do whales have scales even though it rhymes they do not they have skin just like us so their skin is thicker and more durable than ours would be especially in the ocean but they don't have scales like a fish or armored scales like a turtle so to see the smooth skin they have no scales on their body or even microscopic scales like a stingray so good questions we have coming in kimberly's asking about the bigs marine mammals oh biggest someone misspelled biggest that was ally nah it's okay so many questions are popping in it's okay if we misspell a little bit here and there so kimberly we we answered part of the biggest one that's the blue whale a humpback is about half the length and even less than half the weight of a blue whale so even though they're massive beautiful animals they are much smaller than a blue whale now last class somebody was asking during ali's program about if, if whales could drown and that's an interesting thing to think about because they are mammals <sighs> mammals breathe air we can drown so can mammals now depending on how you're defining that technically everything can but 
if you're looking at how birds and mammals breathe air and when their lungs fill with water, and that's how you would define drowning, yes, they can. Now, it's a little sad to think about, but that is actually one of the hunting practices of orca. When they try to, and only some orca eat mammals, but those that do, when they try to capture big mammals, they try to tire them out and push them down on the water. That is a practice of orca. Just like wolves would chase an animal to tire it out until it just can't really evade them or escape them any longer, and then they are able to capture their prey. So while it might be sad to think about, that is part of the natural arrangement. Animals have to chase and hunt certain kinds of food. How they chase them depends on the thing. If you're a sea otter, it's like, ah, urchin, dibs. If you're an orca, it takes a little more effort because they have to have a constructive group hunting practice to capture their food. So it's a little more mm, challenging for them to capture some of their food items. Let's put it that way. All right, let's get to some more questions. We can leave the orca picture up for now because they're fun. They're pretty. All right, let's see. Where did we leave off? Okay, Juliet was asking, what is the smallest mammal? The smallest marine mammal probably counts as the otter because otters are maybe two and a half, three feet long. At least the southern sea otter, the ones down here in Southern California. Two and a half, three feet long, perhaps, and about mm, 50 to 60 pounds. Up in Alaska, they get a little bit longer and maybe up to 100 pounds is the biggest you might see. But that's pretty small, even compared to something of almost the same length, like a harbor seal. Let's see if we can look at a harbor seal real quick. Harbor seals are not very long. They're like four, maybe five feet long, but they're a couple hundred pounds. They're pretty big for as short as they are compared to some of the other longer animals. Super cute, but they are kind of heavy. So see how long one is next to our staff here? So even though it's a little bit bigger than a sea otter, it's a lot bigger than a sea otter around this way. And because of that, they are heavier. Sea otters do not have blubber inside. They have their fur to keep them warm. We talked about that. Seals and sea lions and whales and dolphins have blubber to help keep them warm. It's, a, it's like a jacket on the inside. It's a thick layer of fat that helps keep them warm. Different species have different thicknesses. So the smallest we would probably say is the sea otter out of the animals we talked about. Now, how do otters sleep and how do they float? Well, about the same way that we do. So let's take a look at a sea otter again. The floating aspect, some things can just like lay in the water and they float a little bit easier. Not all of us are great at floating and that's okay. But if you stretch out and lay out in the water, you can float a little bit easier. Now there probably is a little bit of a buoyancy effect or the water pushing something up from the air that gets trapped in their fur, but also the fur itself. So there's a little bit of a buoyancy force that helps them float that way. That's how they would float. They also can just lay back and their bodies have enough surface area. So if you imagine, so if you make a square or a circle this big, is this more or less area than a circle this big? So more surface area in a flat space sitting on the water will help things float. So their backs and their bodies are a little more flattened this way rather than rounded like a seal to help them lay in the water and float. But literally they just sleep like we do and they will hold arms and they have been seen wrapping themselves or holding onto a piece of kelp so they don't float around and drift away from each other. Now, an interesting question that has popped in is how many marine mammals are there? There's a lot of species of marine mammals. There's about 90-ish types of whales. There's three subspecies of sea otter. But then we also have things we haven't even talked about yet, like seals and sea lions. There's a lot of species of seals and sea lions. And polar bears. We haven't even talked about the polar bear yet. I want to talk about the polar bear. I didn't even get to the polar bear. Let's show the polar bear! Okay. While we're showing polar bears... Aww. Let's answer some questions. Not all, actually, I don't think any questions about the polar bear, but that's okay. So there's lots of species of marine mammal. It's hard to count all of them because there's a, a bunch of different kinds of marine mammals. But I would say across all the types of marine mammals, including manatees and dugongs, I mean, we're talking almost 200 species. So that's, that's a good number of marine mammals. Braden asked, do orcas eat other whales? 
Yes, they do. So the, what are called uh, bigs or transient orca, they travel around and eat other mammals. They will eat other mammals too. Polar bears will hunt seals. So sometimes marine mammals eat other mammals. That's just part of nature. Okay, so yes, Braden, sometimes orcas do, but orcas don't generally eat everything. People used to think that because that's what they saw, but they didn't realize until much later that orcas have specific family groups that only hunt specific things. Some orca only hunt sharks and rays. Other orca only hunt salmon. And then some other orca only eat mammals. So it just depends on the orca. Now, Ricky's asking, does the otter eat mo the most of any marine mammal? I think by body weight, yes. So let's go, well, let's think of the blue whale. We can leave the picture of, of polar bears up. The blue whale at 300,000 pounds might eat 4,000 pounds to 8,000 pounds of food a day. Well, that's still like 1% to 8% maybe of their body weight per day. They're not eating 25% like a, like a sea otter. If that 300,000 pound blue whale wanted to eat 25% of its body weight per day, that would be 75,000 pounds of food. They don't do that. The sea otter has probably the biggest diet. That's why they're also the most expensive to feed here because we have to feed them a lot of food even though they're this big. They have a big diet. Uh, now, do otters exercise? They do move around a lot, and we do have them do some different behaviors to see how flexible and energetic they are and make sure that they're healthy. <laughs> Isabella's asking, why are whales fat? You know, the fat layer, the blubber, is like a jacket on the inside, remember? It helps keep them warm. So their size, their huge size, helps keep their bodies warm too. So not only does the blubber do it, but the overall size. So there's this concept in science about your, remember surface area, how much, like how much skin you have compared to your volume. How much, like if you sat in the bathtub, how much the water goes up. Think of like a little field mouse, really tiny. So because of their surface area and size ratio, they lose body heat really quickly. But they can also overheat really quickly too. Because of that, they have potty parts that help release body heat or help preserve the same body temperature. Remember, we started with characteristics of a mammal. Mammals want to be the same temperature all the time. So some of those desert mice have giant ears to help release body heat so they don't overheat. Now, if you're a really big animal like this, your ratio of like amount of skin to size of body helps you preserve body heat. So someone compared like me versus Allie, I would conserve more body heat just naturally than Allie would because we have a different skin to volume ratio. That's how it works. Now think of a whale compared to a much smaller animal. That changes. So between blubber and their overall size, that helps preserve their body heat. Kind of an advanced idea, but it's pretty cool to think about how different sized animals get colder or stay warmer in the same environment. Sasha's asking, what do dolphins eat? Well, remember dolphins are a toothed whale. Teeth help them eat animals. Depending on the dolphin species, they'll eat different kinds of fish, squid. They might actually eat things from the sea floor, like something called a, a uh, strap tooth beaked whale. One of my favorite weird looking animals. So we look it up, it has these two like tusk-like teeth that wrap around its face. They're kind of cool. Okay, we only have short time left, so I'll answer the last few questions we have in the studio. Do marine mammals have twins like people? You know, most of the time they don't have twins. It's kind of a rare thing. People more often might have a twin. It has been recorded that very, very rarely, very rarely would a marine mammal have two babies at a time. Normally they have one. And part of that is just, that's the best thing for them. They can't really keep more than one healthy. It takes a lot of effort. All right, Alexander was asking, oh, we, we did Alexander's question of what does otter, what does an otter eat? They have a lot of different things. They eat lot, lots of stuff from the sea floor. Now, Sasha's question, of how long do the whales and dolphins live? 
Blue whales might live 70 to 90 years. Dolphins are about 50. The longest living whale is the bowhead that can live up to 200 years. So there's a huge range depending on the type. Now Darlene's question about the polar bear. If it's an animal that lives on land, why are they a marine mammal? I'm glad you asked. We actually have a video exactly for this. So they do walk and move on land. They will sleep on land. They hunt and swim in the ocean. Now the cool thing about their swimming is that they make these big circles like this. So we do this. Polar bears swim like they're holding a ball in the middle. So this is why they're marine mammals. They hunt from prey in the ocean and they'll swim in the ocean. Now that's all the time we have. So many awesome questions. I appreciate those of you that were able to text questions in. If any of our teachers are out there watching with your students, please text Allie the number of students watching so that we can record how many of our friends are out there we're reaching because we want to make sure that we're doing our best to answer your questions and provide content that is meaningful to you. Now, for all those questions we couldn't answer on the air, we'll try to answer them online still. You can also email us at this one right here, live at lbaop.org. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your week and your Monday. Join us on Wednesday for more Aquarium Online Academy.